to Plateau State, where one of the major challenges bedeviling the over 18,000 internally displaced victims of Mangu militia attacks now seeking refuge in temporary IDP camps is the issue of feeding and proper shelter. A faith-based organization has responded to the calls and donated some assistance, mostly food items, to the IDPs in Mangu. A correspondent in Plateau State, Funam Joshua, reports. Internally displaced victims of Mangu militia attacks. They live in dire conditions, braving the elements to survive. Their livelihoods gone and hope at all time low. They celebrate the arrival of relief items brought to them by non-governmental organization. More than 18,000 of these locals live across the 25 temporary emergency IDP camps following persistent violent attacks and destruction of properties by the attackers. Food shortage has been the major challenge for these displaced people. The number of children in the camp was about 10,000 at the last count, but the numbers keep rising daily. The leader of the NGO counsels the displaced victims, making them understand that retaliation will bring no resolution to their circumstances, but will keep them in bondage without progress or development. We've said it's time for peace in Magabul land, but we're also walking the talk of peace by bringing uh, massive humanitarian supplies to support and to encourage the people of Magabu and to make a very strong appeal to them not to retaliate but to work for peace. We are appealing to the government to resettle them as quickly as possible. Once those villages are safe, they will go back. The items were handed over to the paramount ruler of the Magavul community to be distributed to the IDPs. Phnom Joshua, TVC News, Mangu. The Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Association Alliance has identified the use of electric vehicles as one of the ways for Nigeria to achieve renewable energy efficiency. This was the resolution from its International Energy Conference on Accelerating Private Sector Investment held in Abuja and Celestine area reports. Globally, renewable energy has been adopted as the most proactive option to address the challenges of electricity instability. Every year, Nigerians spend 15 to $20 billion to buy petrol for generators, and with the recent removal of subsidy from fuel and increase in pump price, most small businesses are now unable to afford running on fuel. It is imperative now more than ever to utilize the provisions in the Electricity Act 2023 recently signed by the President. Against this backdrop, the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Association Alliance conveyed a one-day solution-driven conference to address the issues of epileptic power supply in the country. At the end of the conference, the use of electric vehicles was identified in achieving renewable energy efficiency. The development of carbon market opportunities funding projects with local currency and engaging the 36 states for integrated electricity within their states where also suggestions reached. Gas is 80% clean, so we're going to use, I want to use that within the context of Nigeria to use that to drive our energy transition. And it's very clear, so and this alliance is going to drive the process. We're going to engage oil, oil and gas companies, natural companies to please take this, but you must have one thing. Carbon capture sequestration technology, you must be driven with clean technology. With an electric vehicle company on how to deploy two wheelers and three wheelers in a very remote community. It started from yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so, um, from months after now, we'll be seeing the outcome of the conference. Capacity development in the renewable energy space and in the energy efficiency space. This is something we'll be doing very strongly in the next one year to support the new electricity act. And there will also be capacity development and support for state governments in implementing the electricity act. Currently, 200 million Nigerians are dependent on 3,500 megawatts of electricity per day from the national grid. This is hopelessly inadequate, hence the need to utilize the provisions in the Electricity Act 2023. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. President Bola Tinubu has been reacting to the attempted coup in Niger.
He has sent out a warning that the economic community of West African states will not accept any action that impedes the smooth functioning of legitimate authority in Niger or any part of West Africa. He says the leadership of the ECOWAS region and all lovers of democracy around the world will not tolerate any situation that incapacitates the democratically elected government of the country. And I am being joined by a professor of international relations and strategic studies, David Awarawo, to discuss the Niger Republic issues. Uh, good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. So, Prof, once again, um, a West African country and um, a former French colony is embroiled in um, an attempted coup. Does this come to you as a surprise or were there indications that this was going to happen? Well, uh, it came to me a bit as a surprise because just on a few days ago when uh, ECOWAS leaders met, um, the question of uh, democratic governance and, uh, you know, uh, condemnation of coups was uh, a topical issue. And so for any group of persons to think of, you know, plotting a coup just a few days after that, made it to be surprising to me. But when one looks at the trend of things in West Africa since 2020, where we had had coups in Burkina Faso, in Guinea, in Mali, and two attempted coups, one in Gambia and one in uh, Guinea-Bissau, one is not really surprised uh, entirely because, uh, I mean, West Africa is now, uh, you know, uh, uh, accepting the odious distinction of being the coup bet of, of Africa, uh, which is uh, very concerning. So in some way, it is surprising because only a few days ago it was, I mean, strong condemnation of coups and not so surprising because that's been the trend in West Africa mm. since 2020. And even more concerning, Prof, you will agree, is the fact that Niger plays a very pivotal role in, in the fight against insurgency in the Sahel. How badly will political instability in Niger complicate um, that fight against insurgency? Uh, it will. It certainly will. Um, insurgency thrives when there is instability. And this, these are the kind of things that will encourage insurgents to work strong and, uh, you know, become more violent, thinking that the instability would uh, enable them to achieve their objectives. Uh, we saw what happened in uh, Chad the other time when uh, uh, the president was, uh, was killed, uh, how it destabilized, you know, Chad and then reduced the capacity of Chad to join other West African countries uh, to fight uh, insurgency. So, uh, yeah, it is concerning along that line because when there is instability, insurgents would think that they, would, uh, they are having the upper hand and that will aid the objective to, you know, to, to wreak, wreak havoc uh, in the territories where they operate. Mm. And President Bola Tunubu, who is the, also the, the, the chairman of the ECOWAS Heads of States and Governments, is talking tough, perhaps the toughest we've heard from any of the presidents of ECOWAS. But when you look at, you know, the precedents on how ECOWAS have handled previous uh, previous coups in West Africa, do you think that ECOWAS will be able to achieve anything in terms of bringing stability to um, Niger and other countries who are embroiled in, in a coup? Uh, ECOWAS will, to be fair. Uh, we know how nation states operate, uh, sovereignty and all that, you know, they have their internal control of their affairs. So it's always difficult for uh, international organizations to, uh, they can only do as much as far as uh, uh, trying to uh, influence things positively is concerned. Um, we, we, we know what, what happened to Mali, how much sanction you know, Mali faced, and how that shifted things to some extent in Mali. Uh, the strong position that ECOWAS has maintained, the, 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 the comments that uh, President Tinubu has made, and then calling other leaders, you know, um, is already... All right, thank you so much for talking to us, Professor um, David. All right, I understand his back. Let's just take your last, you, you were making, let's allow you round up. You were making that comment there about ECOWAS. Yes, that ECOWAS will make an impact. The coup will not likely be successful, and ECOWAS intervention will be a major factor in this. Mm. We'll see how, how the role that ECOWAS will play interesting days ahead um, in Niger and other parts of West Africa. Thank you so much for talking to us as always. Professor of International Relations and Strategic Studies, David Awarawa.